For you guys who are professional mechanics, I, I gotta tell you, I honestly really can't imagine making a living like this, but I get so frustrated when something that I literally think is gonna be a two second part of the job becomes a 10 minute thing like this is gonna be. And my bet is this is gonna walk off so easy. It's gonna almost be laughable that I couldn't just pull it off with my hands. And indeed that does seem to be the case because it's just walking off without even any pressure at all. So that's the way it goes. All right, this is how it should have been the first time. It should have just been able to walk off like that. And of course now my tool is all in the way. All right. Stuff like that that makes this so much less fun. This uh, engine mount here. Um, there is a bolt on the inside of it, and this maybe isn't quite so intuitive, but right there, there's this uh, bolt right here on the inside that you're going to be wondering how the hell do you get to it. And uh, the trick is that once you remove the long bolts from the engine mount, if you just pull up real strong, this, uh, this part here will come out. And now, of course, you can easily remove the rest of the engine mount. Now, one thing on this, removing the rest of this engine mount, at least a couple of the bolts are longer than what you'll be able to uh, deal with with the side rail. Um, even if you raise or lower the engine a little bit, you won't be able to clear the side rail. So I find that I have to leave in uh, a couple of those bolts in the engine mount and just remove the engine mount and the bolts together. But you probably won't be able to actually remove the bolts from that engine mount. So don't waste your time. It's easier to just back off the bolts, uh, leave them in the engine mount and just remove the bolts and mount together and install. Of course, don't forget to install the bolts and engine engine mount together. Uh, otherwise, you're never going to be able to get the longer bolts into place. You'll have to take it apart and do it over again. Here's what I'm talking about with that bolt, this uh, lower bolt for the engine mount here um, is just too long and it'll rub up against the frame of the car. So really, rather than fight with it or try to raise or lower the engine and stuff, which isn't going to help anyway, just go ahead and leave it in place there and just remove the whole thing as a unit. All right, we're getting there. All right, so the timing cover is actually a two-part model, like many, many models are. So uh, this top part comes off first. And then uh, let's see if this mount will come out yet. Uh, nope, we have to get the um, lower timing cover off, and then the mount will just come out with that. All right, finally, we're getting to the point there. There's our lower cover. Doesn't really matter whether you do the lower or upper cover first. Um, but just remember when you reinstall this to get your, make sure you put your engine mount on before you do either of the covers. The covers actually go to the outside of the engine mount. There's our engine mount. And finally, we can get to the part of the video that actually really is going to be of interest to most everybody and that is of course where the timing marks are. Uh, I'm fully aware that the majority of my viewers probably um, didn't need all of the beginning of that video but uh, if we look um, on this ring on the outside here there is a little dot right there. So what I always like to do is go ahead and put some paint on there to make it easier to see. All right and that white tooth, that tooth that's painted white, is our top dead center mark. Now, of course, where does it have to line up for top dead center? Well, that is going to be, if we look up here between the belt, there's a little notch on the pump cover here, right there. And I'm going to, of course, paint that white as well. All right, now it is painted white and my other Mark is painted white, so obviously lining those up, I will be at top dead center, but of course, we need to be on the compression stroke, so we're gonna go up to the top of the engine to look at the timing marks there. All right, let's zoom in to the bank two camshaft here, and we can see there is a little line between the teeth on the camshaft gear. And if we look here, there is a little notch in the rear dust cover here. So if we line up 
those two, then at least we know that uh, this cam is lined up. And of course, we should be at top dead center marks lined up on our crankshaft. The tricky part about these engines is this rear camshaft is buried way back. So, um, and of course, it's right next to the, to the sidewall. So we've got a little problem in that it's very difficult to see the timing marks on the camshaft sprocket and on the cover. So how are we going to make sure that we are lined up there? Well, here's what I do. All right, and sorry for the camera work here. This is kind of difficult to do, but what I do is I use a mirror. And if we look in the mirror right there, we can see our timing mark on the sprocket. And then um, let's see if we can move and find our timing mark on the rear cover. Not so easy to do and hold the camera at the same time. Um, but right there, we can see there's the uh, little notch, little arrow on the rear cover. So uh, it takes a little practice using this mirror here, but I find that that's the most accurate way of doing it. Um, other than that, you can stick a small camera in there, maybe your camera phone or something, but you're gonna wanna do something to make sure that you can in be positive these are lined up after you do the new timing belt because uh, from parallax, which is uh, when you look at it from an angle, um, it's going to be impossible for you to tell whether you are off one or two or even three teeth um, without doing some kind of method like this. And of course, what I'm going to do is go ahead and paint my alignment marks white so that I can easily see them. So of course, the first step is let's get the top dead center. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate and we are at top dead center according to that mark. Just zoom in there to show that the marks are lined up on that cam. And then let's check the rear cam. And let's see, there we go. Using our mirror, we can see that we are also at top dead center lined up marks on the cam in the back of the engine. So all we need to do now is verify that the crankshaft is at top dead center. All right, and we can see that our white Paint marks on the crankshaft are also lined up at top dead center. So this engine is definitely at top dead center compression stroke. We can now safely remove the timing belt. And what I'm going to do is paint a white line on the timing belt, both on the front cam sprocket and then also, I won't show this on camera, but I would also draw it on the rear. Um, it's gonna be very difficult to draw a straight line on the rear, so maybe just a dot over that cam sprocket tooth that you made the white paint mark. But the idea is, when we remove the timing belt, if the new timing belt did not have those marks on it, then we would be able to line up the timing belts and paint new marks onto the new timing belt. Um, and that's gonna help us to ensure that we have proper alignment when we install the new belt. So very important if your timing belt does not have those paint marks on it, that you do this or you're gonna have a very hard time ensuring that you've got proper alignment. It can be done, so it's not absolutely necessary, but the white lines make it much easier, really particularly for that rear cam sprocket where it's really difficult to see. The timing mark on the belt itself really makes a big difference. Also, keep in mind, definitely this is a properly timed engine right now. All right, so we're almost ready to take this timing belt off. Now remember, on an interference engine, I'm gonna do this a little bit differently and I will show you that, but I just wanted to make one comment. Uh, when you're doing this timing belt thing, um, one of the common things a lot of people do was, is they'll get it up to top dead center and then they'll just make marks knowing that the engine is at top dead center on the compression stroke. So the, they won't really look at factory marks like what I showed you. They'll just make their own marks. And that's great. The only problem that I have with that is that is assuming that the engine is properly timed before you start taking everything apart. And I never do that. I always assume maybe the engine uh, jumped a tooth. Um, you know, this car is in here to get a timing belt service. Maybe the owner was having some problems with it. Um, I do a lot of cleanup for uh, other do-it-yourselfers that kind of get themselves in trouble. 
Um, I've seen actually several times where people tried to do their own timing belt, they couldn't quite get it timed right, and then kind of embarrassed to admit it, they've brought me the car to do a timing belt, but I quickly find out with a brand new belt that's obviously on there and it's mistimed, you know, why I'm doing the timing belt. So never assume that the belt is timed. Always know where the proper factory marks are. If the proper factory marks did not line up like they did in this video, then I would not have drawn any lines on that belt. I would have set everything in proper time and then I would have made any marks that I need to do. So just keep that in mind. Don't assume that the engine is coming in properly timed. Make sure it leaves properly timed though. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and remove the timing belt. Now, one of the things that we wanna keep in mind is on an interference engine, it's going to be possible that you can actually do damage to the engine when you remove the timing belt. And actually on these models, this is a very real possibility. So what happens is, um, as a matter of fact, specifically on these models, your bank one uh, camshaft is not in a rested position, but your bank two, the front camshaft is. So when you take the timing belt off, your bank two camshaft is gonna stay still. Um, all the springs are relaxed and it's not gonna go anywhere. But your bank one, your rear camshaft, is not gonna be in a relaxed state. The valve springs are gonna be compressed and what's gonna happen is that camshaft is gonna want to snap very hard into a relaxed position. The problem is doing that could cause one of those valves to hit the piston because you do have at least one piston now at top dead center um, over at number one. So in order to correct for that, there's two ways to do it. One way is um, to release tension from the belt and then back off the crankshaft um, to, to lower the piston just a little bit, maybe, I don't know, 45 degrees, something like that. Um, the way that I'm gonna do it is I'm actually, when I before I take the timing belt off, I'm going to secure the camshaft with a wrench and kind of wedge the wrench in place so that the camshaft cannot turn. It actually also helps to do that way because it prevents the camshaft from moving. That rear camshaft, those timing marks are really hard to see without the mirror. So by locking that camshaft in place, I both ensure I keep my timed position to make it easier for reinstallation of the belt, but also it's to prevent that camshaft from moving, snapping into its relaxed position and possibly breaking um, the valve or, or bending a valve or doing some kind of damage. Now, the other thing we're gonna do on this car, and it's a little bit of an aggravation, is that rear dust cover where we made the uh, timing marks on actually covers half the water pump. So we have to remove that rear dust cover or at least swing it out of the way a little bit by removing all but one bolt, which is how I do it. And the problem with that is to remove the uh, rear dust cover bolts, we're going to have to remove this sprocket for the camshaft in the front of the engine here. So um, that is actually easier said than done. You'll need a special tool to do this or come up with some way. That camshaft sprocket bolt is on very tight. And here's the thing, um, you're not gonna be able to remove it with an impact gun because the valve springs are going to absorb the impact gun and they're gonna dramatically reduce the impact gun's effectiveness. So the best way to do that is with a special tool and I'm gonna go ahead and show you all of this stuff but I just wanted to keep in mind and uh, bring it up so you don't just turn off this video and go, okay, I can replace the timing belt now. No, no, we're not out of danger yet. All right, so as stated, I'm going to start by putting a 17 mil wrench onto this rear sprocket and jamming it up against the firewall. If the cam wants to move, it's going to want to rotate towards the firewall. Um, again, notice I'm not using a ratchet uh, wrench or anything like that, so I don't accidentally uh, have it just swing right through the ratchet. And um, that should lock that cam into place so that it doesn't move on me and possibly do some piston damage. Again, another way of doing it is to uh, remove the belt and just move the crankshaft backwards about 45 degrees or so, and that'll put all of the pistons in a position where nothing is at top dead center. All right, our next step is we wanna remove our timing belt tensioner right there. 
Looks like two 12 millimeter bolts there. There's one. And two. And there goes our tensioner and all the slack off of the belt. All right, now we can go ahead and remove the timing belt. I want to be really careful because I took the wrench off that rear cam. So let's get this off. And uh, of course, you'll want to pay attention to the rooting of the timing belt. The um, kit actually should come with instructions, but uh, you'll want to pay attention to that beforehand. Make some notes. Let me go ahead and um, get this on carefully. All right, what I'm going to do is... Uh, see if i can show you this ow i just pinched my finger okay <laughs> so what i wanted to show you is this cam here is very unstable right now it it did jam towards the um firewall very strong i'm kind of struggling to there we go okay so um i'm just gonna do this i'm gonna make sure that it's not gonna hit a brake line and i'm just gonna kind of let it go and there you go you see how it just snapped really hard now had this wrench not been there then the valves would have opened all the way at some point and um if the uh, piston's at top dead center and the valves open all the way what's going to happen is the is the valve is going to slam into the piston and that will certainly stop rotation of the cam but not before maybe some damage is done and it really maybe doesn't show on camera but these valve springs are very strong that cam really really wants to snap um, out of that position that it was in when it's at top dead center now this front cam here um, this one's considerably more stable so it's actually not a concern with having that problem happen but the the cam in the rear of the engine on bank one that cam definitely wants to snap out of that top dead center position and um, it, it can do some damage so just keep that in mind when you're working with an interference engine like this all right right where the light is shining um, that kind of black pulley is the water pump and uh, that water pump, you can see, um, you can see the bolts for the water pump, but the trouble is the water pump itself is actually um, behind this black dust cover. And we are gonna have to remove that dust cover in order to be able to remove the water pump. Um, you can actually remove the bolts by reaching through the camshaft sprockets, but you're still not gonna be able to remove that cover. Um, the, the cover does fit over the shaft for the cam, so we do have to remove that camshaft sprocket, remove as many bolts as we can from the rear cover, uh, including the um, idler pulley with the red center there. And the idea is if we remove all but one of these bolts for this rear cover, we'll actually be able to just swing it up and out of the way of the water pump. And that way we don't have to remove that rear cam sprocket. Removing that rear cam sprocket would be a serious pain and I am not going to do that. And the best way to remove is using this tool from Lyle. This is specifically for this purpose. This is a uh, cam sprocket holder. Uh, the little nubs just lock into the cam gear like that. And then um, by fitting uh, your breaker bar on there with 17 millimeter socket and holding this, um, you'll be able to break that cam bolt loose. The cam bolt is very, very tight. And again, because of the absorption from the springs, you're not gonna be able to use an impact gun. Um, and also really just the way this is designed, um, it's going to be very difficult to jam that up with a screwdriver or something. Uh, one of the strategies that a lot of people may use is taking the old timing belt and making sort of a strap wrench with the old timing belt. Uh, you will quickly find that that will be futile. So uh, you're going to have to either fabricate some kind of tool or get the one like I have. <clears throat> that is on extremely tight as you can tell but the right tools make all the difference